Good evening on the Empty Skull Ranch once again. Now, God willing, storage space willing, we're going to try to shoot part number three of the Bowie Knife Bill. Here we got it. It's all ready to go. I've prepped her. You can see right there, and we're going to begin. So, what we did here, you can see all these little hash marks up and down the blade. It's really tough to grind down uh, hardened steel. I mean, this side, I, I try to keep the tang relatively soft. It's not as hard in, uh, hot in the quench when I stick it in there. So this side stays relatively workable, but it's still quite hard. So, on the table here, we have our parts. So we got bunch of leather here. I have already spared you guys the boring details. I've already cut the keyways into them. So each one of these layers has been predetermined and I cut them out of all these scraps that I have in here using this guy. Just kind of cut the keyways and then trimmed them down to the approximate size of what our handle stock is going to be. So we're going to dry fit them together just to make sure that it all fits. Now we're going to go with the narrower pieces towards the guard. So I'm just gonna thread this through. Just 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 go there we go. Ah just just gonna just gonna thread this there we go. And here we go. So all these guys together coming up through here and this guy here I had a couple of issues finding the right bits and all that but Put a nice little hole into there, cut that out on the bandsaw. As you can see, I selected this for the grain qualities. This is rock maple, once again. I like to do a lot of my handles out of rock maple. But this stuff, when I cut it, had a beautiful river going through each one of these planks. So I set those aside because they were special pieces. So now, that fits on like that. The reason why this is vacant is because I have yet to cut out the guard, which is over here. But that is the width, the width, so the guard is going to fit nicely right in there. So those are all of our layers, and I think if we tap this guy, oh yeah, we gain a couple more little, little uh, nano centimeters, which are called millimeters. <laughs> so let's set all this stuff aside, put it right here. We're going to get our epoxies ready to go, but first, I've got some grinding to do. So, we are going to cut out our gird. I'm going to start by slicing into here so I don't lose future stock material for our guards. And as you can see, I've painstakingly filed this keyway out, which has started with about four drill bit holes. So, without further ado, I am going to cut this out. You all should be wearing safety glasses for this part. I should be too.
So, now I'm going to flip it this way. piece as you can see needs a lot more shaping so i'm going to cut out some of the boring stuff and i'm going to do a little bit of the shaping and i'm going to meet you guys over at the belt grinders all right so here we are with the cutout guard the geared geared so we're going to take this down since it's got a little bit of a uh, bevel or a little cutout that favors this way because the tang had a couple little outcrops in the uh, base of the blade so I fanned it out this way, which means that we're going to have to make this the flatter end. And then we're going to may, may do a little, uh, may do a little in cut right there, kind of make it curve down, classic Bowie knife guard. So let's get it on the wheels. It's broken. It's power. So without further ado, Let's get some power over there. And so, let's get the grinding.
getting the shape of that guard is emerging. So, let's take a little break. I'll come back to you when we're ready for the belt. So as you can see, we're starting to get a little bit of that traditional guard shape to it. Got that little uh, indent right there. Got a little bit of a soft curve right there. We're just going to continue doing that, but on the belt. We got a zirconia belt right here, 40 grit. So see how well this guy cuts as far as metal goes. So we're going to start grinding. Wait a second. All these sparks flying and all that. I kind of have a feeling like I forgot something. So, hmm. Ah, there we go. Now we're ready. All right, let's start cutting. badly either. Should I say for the amount of material it's removing? Make sure to get all the mill slag off of it. Quickly, this mill slag comes off. Looking pretty good. 
that a little bit. And after all this grinding, the amount of material it removes, it really doesn't get it that hot. Maybe because my hands are made out of leather, but I think for the average touch, it's really not that hot. As you see the steel bluing and my skin smoldering, right? As far as it's looking though, I think that's a pretty damn good start right there. Got enough of that space to kind of go around. So, a lot of that stuff can be kind of hashed out when we go back to the belts as well after the uh, gluing process happens. So, let's go to the gluing process. up this little tube right here we're gonna get a little bit of this and a little bit of that we're gonna pour it right into there equal parts that's the end of these little tubes and we are going to put those just on the table somewhere that's it and we got these little guys right here that are great little mixing sticks until they break off in it and then they're no longer great little mixing sticks. And then I wonder why the hell did I use those? And uh, it sounded good at the time. Pure pressure, honestly. Honestly, that was in my glue, man. The other kids made me do it, man. So anyway, I'm getting uh, brought to a dark place in my memory. But uh, let's get some of that sloppy stuff all over her. And after this, we're gonna have to go immediately in for <laughs> awesome sticks, man. All right, let's get some Gorilla Glue going in here because that stuff's nice and it comes with a stick. And that stick supposedly is better than bacon, so let's get that out of there. So, now, break that down. Get some real epoxy going in here. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. I'm gonna stick this back in here. Oh yeah, I don't wanna waste a drop. And now we're gonna start the real mixing. <laughs> mixing. Mix it and remix. Mix it and remix. So, we get that nice and good. So I'm gonna get this all over this handle, all over this handle, all over it, all over front and back. Give this thing the best chance in the world to grip. Now this epoxy has a very quick half-life. So as we're doing this, we're kind of moving a little quickly and we might need to enlist the help of my old friend, Mr. Sawdust. Bring me a tree. Do, 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 So, I'm gonna get it nice and healthy, like right here, on both sides. Oh yeah, I got it on there, which I didn't want to. And drag it down, drag it down. So we're gonna take that stack and knock it all over the place. And we are gonna push that in there, and the idea is to push along. Oh yeah, we don't want to make that mistake. That'd be bad. Slide this guy down here because I forgot that we had to get this guy in past all the glue that I just laid down. That was awesome. But not looking too bad. So now we're going to take this stack starting with this and we are going to lay this across here, like that. 
since I kind of started doing this backwards. I was lost in thought. But if we only showed you the successful ones, it wouldn't be realistic. So my answer to this is gop it behind it. Gop it behind it. Gop it behind it. So as you see, I'm kind of turning up the juice on the pace here. And get this guy nice and saturated. Nice and saturated. Like I said, I started putting this together and I was thinking, get that stuff in the wood handle. And then I remembered, oh crap, I gotta put the leather on first. So what do they say? A smart man learns from his mistakes but a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. So this is a free lesson in the wise man's school of thinking. And as planned, my hands are covered in epoxy. That's just part of the fun, they say. So they say. Again, get to each one of these layers. Nice, real nice. So get that guy right up there. That guy right up there. And as you can see, so on and so forth. Repetitive motion. So, oh yeah, that's nice. That's real nice. Get that guy on there. Nice and good. And this guy on there. Nice and good. And then after this, we are going to whip up another bath of, you guessed it, epoxy. Actually, we're going to do that right now. So, we're going to get this all nice and whipped. nice and most good so here we go do the locomotion and I'm also going to fan into a couple of these layers like that oh yeah these sides have quite a bit quite a bit in these sides so mostly down here and right there and we're going to rotisserie the blade and we're going to fan it in here we're going to fan it in there Whoever's going to end up getting this is going to get a very heavily epoxied handle. That's right. I don't want this thing coming out ever for any reason. I want to make sure that whoever gets one of my knives is going to get something they can pass down to their little ones. I love how this stuff turns that definite color when you know you get the catalyst properly mixed in there. And then when you miss the tray completely and go behind it. But most good, most good. All right, I get it on the arm too because it wouldn't be complete without it going all over the arm and all that. You know, that's how can we make the biggest mess with stuff that stays on you for weeks at a time. I know, it's like a kid playing with paste in the old classroom. I remember those days, carefree, like there's no tomorrow. Like, what flavor paste do we got today? Love it, absolutely love it. So, we should be now at a point where we can slide the old wooden sock on her and call it a day. Also, to build up some of these sides, some of the cheeks, I got another little trick up my sleeve. I do a little bit of, this might seem reckless to some viewers out there, but I do a little pinch of my old friend Sawdust. 
it kind of helps as a bonding agent between the epoxy and what we are putting on there. Kind of helps because the epoxy is going to be encasing the sawdust and the sawdust is going to act as that space filler so we don't have to use tubes upon tubes upon tubes of epoxy to get the job done. It's a space occupant. Kind of like fall of particle board. It's the same concept. So now, get the old wooden sock ready. And I'm going to put it in and out, in and out. And what it builds up, I'm now going to scoop up and I'm going to put inside here. Just wanted to get an accurate read on how much of it it was going to scoop up. Then stuff that down its gullet. And then you know how much it's going to want to drink. Oh, almost put that one on backwards. Right there. See that? That's a nice fit. But I can feel a little bit of a wobble. I'm not happy with that. I have this great sense of OCD when it comes to epoxy. And even more so when I know this is going to go to somebody who is really looking forward to it. Like I said, I'm looking to make something that is going to last the test of time and serve them very well. So, in order to make sure that that gets done, I'm going to completely get my bases covered as well as my hands, if that's what it means to get a nice quality product out there. So, I'm going to put a little go to that, put it right here so you get that leather to kind of Hug it. Hug it out, man. Just hug it out. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now, what we got here, pretty good fit and knife. Pretty good fit. Got a lot of, a lot of jiving between these layers right here. And we're going to give that that little love tap I was telling you about to get that to set nicely. Now that we know we got that, we are going to take this guy, we're going to set it to about that size, and I got to find some wood blocks. I got them lying around here somewhere. So now, after a little bit of painstaking effort between myself and the cameraman, we got this going on oh is she gorgeous check it out so fine she's so fine all right anyway that's uh we got this married to the thing to all these leather pieces to this geared right here geared and um we are going to make sure that that is 100 percent situated on there the way that I like it. There we go. That's a little bit better. That's better. So, we're going to let this dry overnight. And tomorrow, we're going to come back to it. And we are going to grind away all the excess. All the excess stuff here. All the little nasties. This uh, overhang. We're going to make this thing that looks like a wood sock. Actually look like a handle. So... God willing, this should come out pretty nice tomorrow. Just let her mellow in here like this overnight tonight. And we will see you in the AM for some early morning handle shaving on the Empty Skull Ranch.